Once upon a time, on a farm, next to a pond, Mother Duck was sitting on her nest, on her eggs. It was a summer's day. Slowly, one by one, her eggs all cracked open. The ducklings all said, quack, quack, but one egg did not hatch. Grandfather Duck heard all the quacking and went to see Mother Duck. Mother Duck told him about the egg that had not hatched. Grandfather Duck thought the egg looked like a turkey's egg because it was so big. After a few days of waiting, the big egg hatched. Mother Duck could see that the duckling was not the same as the others. It was bigger, white and ugly. Mother Duck was sure that the duckling would change and become like the others. Mother Duck and the ducklings went swimming in the pond. The ugly duckling could swim much better than the others could. Mother Duck was very happy about this. After their swim, Mother Duck took the ducklings to the farmyard to play. The farm animals saw the ugly duckling and were very mean to him. They told him he looked ugly and that he did not look like the other ducklings. The ugly duckling became very sad. Mother Duck was not happy with the other animals and told them to leave the ugly duckling alone. Mother Duck told them how well the ugly duckling swam and how she thought he would look like the other ducklings in a few days. The days went by and nobody listened to Mother Duck. The farm animals still made fun of the ugly duckling. The other ducklings were also mean to him and would not play with him. The ugly duckling felt very sad. He did not want to be at the farm anymore. One night he ran away. He went a long, long way and fell asleep in a muddy marsh. The next morning the ugly duckling woke to see some of the wild ducks looking at him. He asked them if he could stay with them. They told him that he was ugly, so he could not stay with them and had to go. The ugly duckling was very sad. Nobody was ready to be his friend because he was so ugly. It started to rain, so the ugly duckling found a place to stay dry. He took shelter under the porch of an old house. The next day, the house door opened and a big dog came outside. The dog barked at the ugly duckling and the duckling had to run away very quickly. The days went by and winter came. The ugly duckling was very cold. He lived alone near a pond and made his home in the long grass. It was a long winter. Finally spring came with sunny days. One day on the pond, the ugly duckling saw three beautiful white swans swimming. The ugly duckling knew that they would not want him as a friend because he was too ugly. The three swans saw the ugly duckling and swam over to him. They said, hello, new swan. The ugly duckling asked them why they called him a swan when he was a duck. 
the swans told him that he was not a duck and to look at his reflection in the water. The ugly duckling was very happy with his reflection in the water. He was not an ugly duckling anymore. He was a handsome white swan. The three swans were happy to be his friends and they all swam in the pond. The four swans flew up in the sky. The ugly duckling was a very handsome white swan. He was very happy. The children on the ground clapped as the swans flew above them. The next day, the three little pigs left and went into the woods. They did not see a big bad wolf watching them from behind a tree. The wolf was hungry and wanted to eat the three little pigs. The three little pigs met a man with some straw. The first little pig asked the man if he could have some straw to build his house with. The man said he could and gave him some straw. The first little pig made a house from the straw. He was very happy with his straw house. The other two little pigs waved goodbye and carried on through the woods. The first little pig went into his straw house. A little ahead, the two little pigs met a man carrying sticks. The second little pig asked the man if he could have some sticks to build his house with. The man said he could and gave him some sticks. The second little pig made a house from the sticks. He was very happy with his house made from sticks. The third little pig waved goodbye and carried on through the woods. The second little pig went into his house made from sticks. The third little pig met a man pushing a wheelbarrow filled with bricks. He asked the man if he could have some bricks to build his house with. The man said he could and gave him some bricks. The third little pig worked very hard and made his house from bricks. He was very happy with his house made from bricks. He wanted his house to be stronger than the other two. The big bad wolf went to the first little pig's house. He looked in the window and saw the first little pig. The wolf knocked on the door. The wolf asked if he could come in. But the first little pig would not let the wolf come inside. The big bad wolf huffed and puffed. He blew the house made from straw away. The first little pig ran to the second little pig's house.
the big bad wolf went to the second little pig's stick house. He looked inside and saw the two little pigs. He knocked on the door and asked if he could come in. The two little pigs would not let him come inside. The big bad wolf huffed and puffed. He blew the house made from sticks away. The two little pigs ran to the third little pig's house. The big bad wolf went to the third little pig's house. He looked in the window and knocked on the door. The three little pigs were all in the house together. The big bad wolf asked if he could come in, but the three little pigs would not let him come inside. The big bad wolf huffed and puffed, but he could not blow the house made from bricks away. The brick house was too strong for the wolf. The big bad wolf carried a ladder to the house. He was going to climb down the chimney and into the house that way. The big bad wolf climbed up the ladder and onto the roof. He was very happy that he would eat the three pigs today. The big bad wolf jumped down the chimney. He landed in a pot of boiling water. The three little pigs had put the pot on the fire underneath the chimney. The big bad wolf was burnt badly. He jumped out of the pot and ran out of the house. The three little pigs were very happy. They did not have to fear the wolf anymore. They lived happily ever after. Once upon a time, next to a big forest, lived a little girl with her mum and dad. Each time the little girl went into the forest, she wore a red hood. Everyone called her Little Red Riding Hood. One day, her mum had baked a cake. The cake was a present for Red Riding Hood's grandmother. Grandmother lived on the other side of the forest. Red Riding Hood's mum asked her to take the cake to Grandma. Mum told Red Riding Hood to keep on the pathway and not stop anywhere. She told her not to talk to strangers. Mum and Red Riding Hood waved goodbye to each other. Little Red Riding Hood went into the forest. She had a basket on her arm with the cake inside. A big bad wolf was watching her. He was very hungry. Little Red Riding Hood did not see him. He came beside.
beside Red Riding Hood. The wolf tried to sound friendly. He asked Red Riding Hood where she was going. She told him she was going to see her grandmother on the other side of the forest. The big bad wolf told Red Riding Hood that she should pick some flowers for Grandma. As Red Riding Hood was picking the flowers, the wolf ran off. He wanted to get to Grandmother's house before Red Riding Hood. The big bad wolf arrived at Grandmother's house. He knocked on the door. Grandmother asked who it was. The wolf changed his voice and said it was Red Riding Hood. Grandmother said the door was open. The big bad wolf let himself in. Grandmother saw him and began to scream. The big bad wolf was not satisfied. He wanted to eat Red Riding Hood as well. The big bad wolf dressed himself in grandmother's clothes. He climbed into her bed. He waited for Red Riding Hood to arrive. Red Riding Hood came to Grandmother's house. She knocked on the door and asked if she could come in. The Big Bad Wolf changed his voice. He sounded like her grandmother. He told her to come in. Red Riding Hood said what a deep voice her grandmother had. The wolf said it was better to greet her with. Red Riding Hood moved closer to her grandmother. She said what big eyes she had. The wolf said they were better to see her with. Red Riding Hood said what big ears grandmother had. The wolf said they were better to hear her with. The wolf told her to move closer. Red Riding Hood said, What big teeth she had. The wolf told her they were better to eat her with. The wolf jumped out of the bed. Red Riding Hood screamed. Red Riding Hood ran from the house. The big bad wolf chased her. She saw a woodcutter. Red Riding Hood told him that the wolf had eaten her grandmother. The brave woodcutter picked the big bad wolf up. He shook him and the grandmother came out. She was shaken but safe and okay. The woodcutter, grandmother and Red Riding Hood all watched the wolf run away. They were happy now. The big bad wolf had gone. Red Riding Hood and her grandmother thanked the woodcutter. Little Red Riding Hood told her grandmother and the woodcutter that she had learnt a lesson. She would always follow her mother's instructions and never talk to strangers again. Robots, monsters, phonics, bugs, fruits, vegetables, vehicles, space, and more. We have classic fables with morals like the hare and the tortoise, lion and the mouse, the thirsty crow, as well as fairy tales like Cinderella and Beauty and the Beast. Stories on Halloween, Thanksgiving, and Christmas make the holiday season even better. Every story has two modes. Read by myself and read for me. And read for me, the text is highlighted during narration so that kids can also learn to read along. The read by myself mode can be used by parents for some bedtime reading with kids. Reading stories helps children to build skills like listening, communicating, and understanding. It develops their self-confidence, language, and vocabulary. 
So start your free trial to enjoy these stories right away. 